So um, I remember my grandmother as a very happy person. Everywhere she, she went, she really brought some to the people around her. She really lived by Chazal's heavy Mikabel, it's called the Seder Panemia Fod. Everywhere she went, she smiled, she would greet everyone. She would go into the food store and pay for something and say, I hope you have a happy day. Do something that makes you happy. Make sure that you do something that makes you happy today. To the random cashier. And she also said it to us, of course. <laughs> What um, you do you know, on your happy day? Um, she, she would always make sure we had a good time, whether we would go to her house or she would come to ours. She would come to our birthday party. She would travel five hours to just my regular seven-year-old birthday party. She would travel for five hours. That's how far she lived. So we didn't see her many times a year. But when she came, she really came with a full heart um, with Grampy. Chris and um, and when we go to her, it was always a lot of just uh, just love the whole time, love and fun, fun doing arts and crafts projects going on, um, tractor rides, swinging across hay ride, hay hay, um, you know, across the hay, not a hay ride, we swung across the ceiling, holding on ropes and swinging across the barn. Um, doing projects, picking fruits, um, vegetables, going on hikes. <laughs> we did sheep shearing. No, we did sheep shearing. Um, we were she would dance with us. Just, her, she had a simcha sachai into her. That was just um, a lot of a lot of simcha, and um, that's that was the thing that stuck out in my mind. Yeah, yeah. I said that one of her she many talents. She was an extremely talented person. And one of her many talents was composing and writing um, songs. She wrote many songs. There's uh, from we are, we are the Pleasant Valley kids. She wrote when my mom was a pet counselor in a camp in Pleasant Valley. And that's all. And uh, same thing for us. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, like, like I said before, the scene, you know, what, who we are and what, the fact that we're living here in Israel and you know. I, I see myself as using those same talents and trying to use them to, to inspire the Jewish people. I feel like that's a testament to who she was and the talent that she had and the type of, um, you know, she, she wasn't a religious person, but she was a very straight person. And, uh, and that honesty and that straightness is something that my mom is and my, my parents are, uh, like, attracts the like. And that's who we are. So I feel like we are, you know, who we are is very much an extension of who she was. Then nobody will hear you. Go. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, but then we won't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> you're fine, mommy. Just start. You know it by heart. Mom, you're good. Just talk. Just give her a, a phone. Just give her a phone. Light up a phone. Stand here. What? Here, stand in the middle stand over here. Stand over here by Yosef Yehuda. There's a light coming down. Right behind, right behind Kyle. Right, 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 right by your family photo. Oh, right here. Right, here. right, right by the family photo, there's a light. Oh, yeah, perfect. Right there. With, over the, the, with the picture. With the picture behind me. Got it out. But it's not the way she's doing it's a good question. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I was going to talk about two things. I'm, uh, really, I'm really involved now learning about Kohelis. You know, we read Kohelis every year. Really depressing. What do we get out of it? There's so much stuff. Uh, the, final, the, thing is the final line when he says, what are we supposed to do with our lives? We're supposed to do Hashem's, fear Hashem and do His mitzvahs. But like I'm learning that all the other stuff is behind it, and um, he goes through, it's Shlomo HaMelech that, that writes it, and he goes through all the different possibilities and philosophies of life. One philosophy of life is to be the hedonist, you know, eat, live, and be merry. He tried everything. He tried being the builder. He tried being, he was the Chacham. 
He did all these different things. He was looking so desperately for the purpose of what's, of your existence. What's the purpose of your life? So um, this is a little depressing. I'm going to mention it. Um, so in, in uh, Peric 7, no, yeah, 7, it says, um, a good name is better than good oil, and the day of death is the, is the day of death. A good name is better than oil, and the day of death rather than the day of birth. It's better to go to a house of mourning, or we'll call it a house of, of yard sites, than go to a house of feasting, which this was also. For that is the end of man. The end of man is the morning, and living and the living should take to heart what you learn at a yard site, what you learn at a funeral. Because, you know, what does a little baby do? Everybody prefers to, to go with the birth of a baby. But the baby hasn't done anything yet. He has potential, but he hasn't done anything with his life yet. But instead, when you go to a house of mourning or a yard site, uh, you know, to a funeral or a yard site, you talk about that person and what he accomplished in his life, and that's the purpose. And then all of a sudden you think to yourself, wow, this is really going <clears> to <throat> happen to me too one day, so I'm going to have to really take heart of what this person did in his life, and maybe I can make my life better. And so it's just, just thinking about how you can be a, make your life more useful and more useful. So that's a little bit from Kohelis. That was, I was that was an extra. That's all the depressing part now, or on the happy part. <laughs> that was he also says about see. to live to live a life with no, your no, wife. Yes, yeah, it that just, that right. specifically says that. That's right. First, he puts down all women. No, but you know, he puts down all women. That's the happy part. And happy wife is a happy life. Yeah. Now, now when I was Michelle and Darigan with Coelho's, we were like, oh my gosh. Yeah, she's really good though. Okay, so what I really wanted to talk to today and compare it to my mother is um, in this week's Parsha, it's an amazing, um, it's very nervous, nervous again. Okay, I'm going to ignore it. Um, so, um, what, this camera that's facing and recording everything you're saying? Yeah, that's okay. Makes you nervous? Um, Millions of people are watching. She's <laughs> live. It's going on Facebook. So, um, what's happening is the following. Um, this week's Parsha, um, Moshe comes down with the Luchos, and what do the Jewish people do? They are doing Kedah Egel. What does Moshe do with the, the Luchos, the first day? Right. He throws them down. Sorry, very angry. Hashem is angry. He says, you better go down and watch what those people are doing. And um, he breaks the Luchos. And then he goes back up again, Melissa. He goes back again the second time. And what does he do? He gets a second set of Luchos. This set of Luchos he comes down with. And um, when he comes down for the second time, something is very special about Moshe. Who knows what it is? Okay, I His feet smell. Quiet. No. Melissa <laughs> knows. His head up. His face is shining. All right. He must have had a good Parsha part, uh, Parsha Parsha question. And he wears a mask. <laughs> when does he not wear the mask? That's the whole part. Oh, so it's okay. Whatever you say is great. So um, he comes place? down and his yeah. face is shining. It's radiant. Okay, and the word that it is is carne or, which his face is full of light. It actually means horns. And also some people uh, mistranslated <laughs> as um, carne, which well, means horns also. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why Michelangelo's statue has horns, and that's why every guy in this world thinks that we have horns, but that's a side thing. That's but anyway, it really means that he had, not only does he have carne or of light, he has carne hope, <laughs> splendorous light that, that emanates from his face. And it's like incredible. It comes down, and he's like, his face is shining. And the real question is, and that's what this verse is, where does this uh, come from, these rays of light? Okay, so there are a few things. I'm going to not tell you all of them because um, it's too long. But um, first what happens is Moshe is like in the cave. And uh, he's in a kind of a cave. And he begs Hashem to tell him, let me see your ways. Let me see what you look like, Hashem. Or at least let me understand your ways. And Hashem says, nobody can look at me face to face and live. But I'll give you a glimpse of what my midos are and what I'm like by looking at me from the back. So Hashem kind of puts his, this is the midrash, he puts his hand over his head and um, so that Moshe can only see him from the back. 
And he's and at that time he actually learns from uh, Hashem the Yud Gimel Midos of Hashem, which is the the Yud Gimel um, uh, Midos or of Harakaman, you know, which is what we say on the day on Yom Kippur. That's and the Pesukim, Mom. It's not the Midrash. It's the that's in the Pesukim. Oh, it's right in the Pesukim. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. So, um, so Moshe actually sees that, and it's this whole experience. <laughs> this is one of the uh, n- numerous ways that some of the Chazal tell us where the radiance comes from. So, this is idea number one, that the radiance comes from he actually witnesses and sees Hashem from behind through the 13 um, meters of Okay, that's the first one. The second one... Okay. This, uh, Wait, so that, that's what caused the light? Or that caused the radiance. Also, and he was constantly like talking back and forth with like shit. And being on 40 days and 40 nights on high Sinai, having conversation, so to speak, with Hashem, all the spirituality entered him. And he, this, this was part of the radiance also. Is this next part was really cool. This is more of a, uh, a midrash idea. I don't think I think it's midrash, not to, not the actual pesukah. Yeah. Is that he, when he came down? I did this with you before. I need you again. Moshe comes down. This is Moshe over here. He's coming down with the Luch, the second luchos this time. Okay, the first ones he destroyed, and the second one he's going to come down with. And um, Moshe, uh, Hashem made the second luchos. But um, I think Moshe created the Evan part. He prepared it, and, and Hashem actually wrote the second Luchos. Now, so this six, who knows how many uh, Tfachim there are in the Luchos? Six. six. How many? Six. Yay. Six by six. Six for you. Okay, so there's two here the that Moshe is holding two of the Tfachim. Hashem is holding, not really. No. Uh, these two tefachim, and then there's the middle two tefachim. These, this is all the spirituality and the learning that Moshe is going to learn from Hashem. Hashem literally gives over um, these two uh, tefachim of um, the lukos over to Moshe. This part is Hashem's two tefachim, which man will never ever really understand. And the middle one is the uh, two tefachim where Moshe can learn, some, know some of it. And by really concentrating and working on it, he's going to uh, know it deep within his body and really understand what the Torah is all about. So those are the three, three sections when he comes down the mountain. Okay, but the little girl. Hashem was holding it with him as he came down the mountain? That's what you said. Somebody said that. Huh? <laughs> no, that he wasn't, but it was the idea that it's, 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 yeah, it's broken up into those three parts. So, um, so you can just imagine um, Moshe coming down with all this knowledge, and what does he do when he comes down? He is giving over his knowledge of the Torah, first to Aaron, Aaron's sons. And then all to the Jewish people, B'nai Yisrael. Okay? So he's given it all over. So Moshe is the paradigm of being the teacher, the Rebbe, who teaches uh, Tommy Dim, and Tommy Dim um, to their Tommy Dim. And throughout the ages, he is the uh, main person giving this over. And so this teaching of a Rebbe to his Talmud is like a very important um, model that Moshe represents to us. And each and every one of us also, just like a, a tzaddik says it to his Talmud, to, to his students, um, the same idea of we're supposed to all be a model of Torah, we're supposed to all be not models to our children, and our children's children down below. And this is how, of course, the um, the whole line of Torah has been passed down from the very beginning of time to now. So in other words, Moshe, this was his radiance. He's been being able to give that over. Now, since all of us are Jewish people and we're supposed to do this, we're supposed to have, be a model to our children, we're supposed to be also able to um, give this over. And everybody, each and every one of us has that innate radiance about us. And um, so my mother, first of all, she was a teacher. She had a nursery school. 
probably, how many years do you think she had? 15 years? Before my time. Many, many years. 20 years. And e each year maybe she had, maybe she had 30 to 50 kids. So think of how many kids she taught over the, all these years. And not that she had the Jewish background, but she, this is one thing that was really special about my mother. She had Torah within her. Even though she didn't know it, even though she didn't learn it, she was a teacher and she passed down really good things to me and my, my brothers and sisters. I felt like she just knew morality innately. She just knew the right things about how to live a good life, what was right, what was wrong. And, and this, was, this was her special thing. And that's why I, I can sort of relate Moshe to her as far as the radiance and the teaching um, that also she taught you know, music lessons, uh, guitar to children as well. But it was this thing that she just had inside her. It was her own radiance of being a good person and knowing what was right and wrong and passing it down to us and to our children, children's children. Oh, yeah. uh.